I know you have missed having a proof dedicated section, so here you go to sate that desire. Section 5.5 is all about indirect proofs. An indirect proof is also commonly known as a proof by contradiction. If you want to go super duper old school, you can call indirect proof by this Latin phrase, which means reduced to absurdity. That seems a bit much though. Doing regular proofs works best for most instances, but there will be times where it is easier to go in the back door and approach it from another way, which is where indirect proof comes in. Instead of proving something must be true, you prove that it cannot be false. If you prove something cannot be false, you have a double negative and it is positive again. Some of the most difficult proofs in mathematics were finally solved because they found an easier time of it going the indirect route. The proofs start out looking exactly the same. And in fact, most proofs can be solved either the regular old way or through an indirect proof. If we were going to solve it the regular way, you should be used to this idea by now. We assume that the given information is true and use that as our starting point. We then chain together a series of valid steps making our way to our ending point, the proof statement. And finally we arrive at the goal and show that the proof statement is definitely true. That should be old hat to you by now. With an indirect proof, instead of trying to show that the proof statement is true, we need to show that the proof statement cannot be false. To do that, we start off by assuming that the opposite of the statement to prove is true and use that as our starting point. With the indirect proof, we kind of work the other direction. Instead of starting with the given and working towards the proof, we start with the opposite of the proof and work our way up to the given. We eventually need to show something in the given is contradictory, or, in the Latin way to do it, absurd. By showing that something given is contradicted, we can conclude that our assumption must be false. So we work to prove that the opposite of the proof is false. We work from the bottom up. I know that's a bit confusing, and it will help when you see an example here in a bit. So when should you try to do a proof indirectly? First, it's probably a safe bet to use it if the question blatantly asks you to use proof by contradiction. Pretty much guarantee your teachers are expecting it at that point. But failing that, indirect proofs are often best when you see some negation in the given and or prove lines. So for this one, one part of the given has the not in there. This one has a not in the prove statement. Often there will be a not in both the given and the proof statement. This one down here has two not equal symbols in there. Those are negations too. There might also be not congruent symbols, which are just as negating as the not equals two symbols. Any of those negations are a major, huge, massive hint that an indirect proof might be the way to go. If you see any of them, immediately think to try to do it via proof by contradiction. So here's what an example might look like. Traditionally, you see more paragraph proofs compared to two column proofs when dealing with proof by contradiction, but I'll show you both. Even if you are doing a paragraph proof, these tips for how to start the two column proof will help you plot out how you will proceed in your paragraph proof. And as a side note, you usually won't know how many steps your proof will take, since there are multiple ways to do them, but I gave it away here just to make this presentation easier. Here we have two not congruent symbols in the proof, which leads me to say that an indirect proof is needed. Let's try it out. These are the steps to start an indirect proof. Do them every single time. Our first step is to always put the opposite of the proof statement first. The proof statement is that line segment CB is not congruent to line segment AB. So the opposite of that is line segment CB is congruent to line segment AB. That's our first statement. The reason we put is temporary assumption, assuming the opposite, or something similar. There is no standard thing to say. Just get that idea across. Remember, in an indirect proof, we are trying to show that the opposite of the proof must be false. So the opposite of the proof is our starting point. The next step is to put the item to prove as your last step. This is still our ultimate goal. We started off wanting to prove that line segment CB is not congruent to line segment AB, and that hasn't changed no matter how we are going about proving it. So that's our final line still. With these indirect proofs, we start with the opposite of the proof and we work our way up to something in the given. We want to show something in the given is contradicted, given our opposite assumption in line one. So we need to target one of those items in the given as the thing we will try to contradict. Like the last slide, it's a big huge hint if something in the given is negated in some way. Here we have that angle ADB is not congruent to angle CDB. So that should be a big hint that that is the piece we should try to contradict. So put the opposite of that information in the penultimate step. For those of you who don't know, penultimate means next to last. We put the opposite of it there in the proof because if the opposite of it is true, then we have our absurdity. We have targeted one piece of information in the given to try and contradict. We want to use the rest of that information. So put all the rest of that given information as your second step. Sometimes there won't be anything else, so you wouldn't have this fourth step. This has taken a bit of work, but by applying these four steps, you have changed this proof into a proof you are familiar with. Now you have set up something you proceed with just like you have other proofs up till now. It works just the same. It just means remembering these four initial steps. And like I said, you will often be doing these in paragraph proof form. 
but sketching out these four steps will help you plan out how your paragraph proof will proceed. So let's work on finishing this proof now. First we have an English word staring at us in step two. So that should be telling you to make an equation out of it. Angle ABC has been cut in half, so that means that angle ABD must be congruent to angle CBD. The reason being the definition of the English word there, so definition of an angle bisector. That should be automatic. You should translate English words into equations like that automatically. Now what do we do next? We almost have these triangles congruent. What else do we need? Well, we do have a common side for those triangles, so the reflexive step seems like a good idea. Line segment BD is congruent to itself. The reason is the reflexive property. Now we have enough information to prove our triangle is congruent. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. The reason is the SAS postulate. Those angles are corresponding parts to our congruent triangles, so CPCTC will allow us to say they are congruent. At this point, we have just proven something in the given is untrue. We have both that angle ABD is congruent to angle CDB and that angle ADB is not congruent to angle CDB. We have our contradiction, our absurdity. Angle ADB is not simultaneously both congruent and not congruent to angle CDB. That can't be. So now we get to our final step. The reason is actually a bit longer than I could fit here. Step 6 does contradict something in the given, but it should also say that therefore our assumption in step 1 must have been incorrect. I said I would show you how this would look in paragraph proof form. So going back to this stage of our proof, I said that even if you weren't doing a two column proof, these initial steps are very helpful for getting you ready to do a paragraph proof. And that is absolutely true. So sketch out these initial steps. Give yourself an indirect proof outline like you would do an outline in English class before an essay. Use these pieces of information to lay out your outline. What do you assume? What's your final goal? What's the penultimate step which will be your intermediate goal? Which parts of the given will you be using? How will they be helpful? What can you do with them? And finally, how will you get from the beginning to the end with everything you've sketched out so far? Pause the video here and try for this for yourself. Try and turn this thing into a paragraph proof. Then move on and I will show you how I did it. Here's my version of the paragraph proof. Yours may obviously differ. In fact, if your sentences were exactly like mine, that would be extremely fishy. You should have your own way and style to convey the same idea. But that's the basic structure of how an indirect proof works, both in two-column proof form and in paragraph proof form.